everyone. My name is Christine Kolodzewski. I am based in London in the UK. Um, I work as a principal technical consultant and I'm certainly looking forward to giving you a bit of a demo. So what we're going to talk about today is obviously navigation in power apps. It's a very hot topic right now and, and, and generally UI and UX is, is a very hot topic. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm an active community contributor. You might have seen me on Twitter or, or LinkedIn, constantly sharing some various tips and tricks on how to kind of take UI to, to, to the next level. Anyone that wants to connect with me, uh, this is the QR code to my LinkedIn, my Twitter, all of my socials as well, and my GitHub repos. If you want to get some free components that will shortly be submitted to the repository, uh, please get them from, from there. So let's talk about mobile navigation first and why it actually matters. Now, in the UX and UI world, uh, we have what's called the thumb zone. Now, if I was to kind of talk to you about what the thumb zone is, if I was to just grab my phone, the thumb zone is effectively the area that's easily reachable. And can everyone see my thumb, by the way? Can can everyone see what, what I've got on my screen? Let me just move you to, to the next slide. So the thumb zone is effectively the area that you can easily reach with your thumb while you're navigating across the application. So the top kind of bar on, on here is the area that's very easily reachable without having to kind of stretch your thumb. Then as we go a bit further up, you'll find that it's quite difficult to actually be able to reach where if you get to the very top, it will be pretty impossible. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm a very lazy person. I tend to kind of prop my phone like that and try and reach the top of the screen. The amount of times I've dropped my mobile phone, um, I can't count on one hand, unfortunately. So I've had to have the screen replaced many times. So what you want to make sure is that your mobile navigation is actually on the bottom here. So for any user that's using your application, be able to quickly access all of the important screens uh, in your application directly from, from here. So why does mobile navigation actually matter? Now, the first reason why it matters is accessibility. Um, I have seen this many times where people have placed, say, a cog um, icon, as an example, on the top, and then the users will have to press on the cog to, to get like a pop-up menu or a fly-out menu, and then choose a setting from there. Now, if you are a person that's struggling with, with um, let's say, motor skills, so you, you're having to kind of navigate through your application with one hand, it is going to become very difficult for a user to actually reach that cog setting and then try and get to, to, to that point. Um, if you are using a screen reader as an example, the screen reader will not even pick up your flyout menu. So if you have a flyout menu that will become visible when you press the button, the screen reader will not actually pick it up. What will effectively happen is the screen reader will read everything that's on the screen. And then the moment the person presses the button, the screen reader will read the whole screen again. And then at the end of that screen reader, it will then talk to the user about, about the menu that they have on the screen. Now, another set of users that might be affected as well is people that use what's called assistive touch. So I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. Um, a lot of smartwatch brands allow you to actually navigate through your mobile phone by using hand gestures. So if you have a smartwatch, you are able to do this to navigate through your application. Now, I don't think I have to say that. If you have a cog setting somewhere on the top of your screen, and you're having to navigate through your application using hand gestures, you are going to do this about 10 or 20 times by the time you get to the setting that you want to reach. Now, the second reason why, and it's very interlinked with the first one, is around user experience. Now, if you're a user, I mean, we are all in a rush, always busy. We want to be able to do something with an application within seconds. You don't want to have to navigate to a menu, go to a sub menu, and then have to try and navigate through your screens. You want to be able to open your application and have some kind of menu on the bottom. So if you want to submit a new request, if you want to see your basket, if you're using a shop shopping application, you want to be able to just click on a button on your screen. Doesn't matter what screen you're on, you want to be able to press that button and get to that um, immediately. And the last reason, I know it's like a cliche. Um, it, I'm kind of biased because I'm a very UX UI person. If your application looks awesome, your users will love it. The user adoption will be much higher as well. So you, your people will want to use the applications in the future as well. Now, one thing that I hear quite often is, Christina, I'm not a designer. I don't do coding. I don't know where to start. I just wanted to work. One thing that I always say is get inspired. If you don't know how to create nice looking things, you know, there's still there's still hope for you, I, I promise. So there's three kind of resources that I always recommend to kind of use. The first one is CodePen.io. Now, if you've worked in software development or, or web development, you'll be very familiar with CodePen. It allows you to see how different developers tackle a specific problem, whether that's a website, an animation, whatever that might be, and actually see the code snippet too. So if you want to get a little bit inspired, please do not copy some 
someone's work, you can easily see how someone has actually tackled that problem. Now, the second website is called Dribble.com. Dribble.com works similarly to CodePen, so it allows you to see wireframes of websites, animations, and all of that, but you don't actually get the chance to see the code snippet. So um, if you want to use Dribble, please be aware that you will not be able to actually see what, what's in the back end. And the third kind of suggestion I always have is just take your mobile and see what you like. So if you open up your mobile, I'm not sure about you, I have dozens if not hundreds of applications on my mobile phone. Pick the application that you used the last time. If you liked it, see how you navigated through the application. See if you liked it, what did you like about it? And try and replicate that into your Power App. So. Without any further ado, let's actually crack on with the demo because I have a very exciting demo to show you. So what I have done for today, if I just quickly navigate to my application, um, there we go. Um, I have an application and uh, hopefully you can all see the, uh, the application itself. Um, it's an application called Apartment Manager. Now, um, this is an application that I demoed at the Scottish Summit last year when I, uh, sorry, last weekend, wasn't last year, when I was doing an accessibility demo. And this application uh, allows you to do things like changing settings, uh, personal settings, changing the language, trigger a screen reader, change the theme and do all of, all of that. So the kind of use case for the application is very simple. I've recently moved houses and I have a terrible memory. So every time I went to Ikea or to a furniture shop and someone asked me how large the room was, I would forget or give them the wrong measurements. And then obviously the furniture doesn't fit where, where it should fit. So I thought, well, perfect use case for Power App. Let's build an app I can take to Ikea and actually show the people what I'm looking to, to achieve. So the application allows you to see all of the rooms and all of the measurements directly from here. So I'm able to navigate to one of the rooms, see what I have purchased already, um, tick one of the boxes if I want to add additional things that I've purchased. Now, if someone asks me what the layout of my room is, again, I am very terrible at describing things. I can easily toggle that to map view. And as you can see, I can see the whole kind of place um, in a floor kind of way. And I can easily tick, click on one of these. Let's say we'll choose the walk-in wardrobe in here. And as you can see, I can see exactly what I've bought, what's still missing um, in there as well. So the key thing that I want to obviously want you to pay the attention to is the bottom navigation menu. So as you can see, we have a very kind of clear indication as to where in the screen I currently am. Now, from an end user perspective, if I can easily navigate to the home screen without having to have 20 pop up menus, that's perfect because it means I can do my job really quickly, do what I need to do in the application and just navigate to do whatever else I need to do. So let's go and actually show you how this is built. If I navigate to my components now, in terms of how the actual component is built, it's very simple. I know it might not look very simple, but I promise it is very simple. We are using two controls. So if I was to open that pop up in there, we have one control that's the HTML text and the other one is the gallery. Now, the HTML control is what is driving the design from the back. So if I was to hide the menu on here, if we just turn that to turn visible, you'll see that what I have on the screen is just a very simple div tag. Well, actually two divs on the screen. So if I was to just open the code view, if I just quickly open that up again, that's not very readable. So I have actually prepared uh, VS Code instead so you can actually see what we have in here. So as you can see, we just have two very simple div tags. We have one div tag, which is the main kind of navigation menu in here. Uh, so if I just quickly pop that closed and then we'll open VS Code again, wherever that disappeared to. Oops, that's disappeared. Perfect. Exactly what, what we needed. Let me just open that up again open that in there. So you'll see that we have a very simple couple of disk tags with, with just some very simple properties. So it isn't very anything kind of complicated, nothing special in there, just something very basic. But that's what's given us that nice kind of UI. So you can see that we have the very native bar on the bottom here. Again, very simple bit div tag. It's just a rectangle with some nice border radius. You can have a little bit of nice box shadow around. So it just gives you that really modern kind of experience that you will see on an, in a um, native application. And then the second part of that is obviously our menu. So if I was to turn that to visible, the menu itself is very simple. If I was to just navigate to the actual menu items, which we have in a component, and we'll go to menu items, you will see that I just have a very simple table with three columns. The first column is the menu item. This is what's going to drive the kind of name. So if you wanted to add the label um, as to what screen you're on, you will be able to do that from here as well. Menu screen navigate. So this is the screen that you want to navigate to when you actually press the button. And then we have the menu logo. Now for the menu logo, I am using an SVG, which is why it looks like it's a lot of code. It isn't a lot of code, I promise. If you want to learn more about SVGs, 
uh, I will I will share some resources as well. So that's what we have in here. N now that we've kind of put all of that resource in here, we just need to drive a lot of the colors and then how the behavior works. So if I was to navigate to, let's say, menu, and we'll go to the image as an example, what you will see here is that the color of my SVG, we have the property here, path fill, uh, will be driven by whether the item in the gallery has been selected. So if, if I have selected the gallery item and the screen equals the screen I am currently on, the color of that will be the icon color hex, which is a custom property that I've added to the component. For any other uh, kind of situation, we will have the light gray color that you saw in there. So if I was to just navigate back in here and we'll go to our application, let me just zoom out. You can see that this is what we're doing. So for, for when the screen is actually active, the color of the SVG will be blue. Any other situation, we just want that to be gray. So we don't care what, what color we'll, we'll have in there. Now, this is a very simple menu. I'm not going to lie that it's a very complex menu. It might look ni much nicer than it actually is, but there's actually a few more demos that I'd like to show you. So as you can see on the left hand side, I've gone ahead and actually built not one, but eight different menus to kind of show you what you can actually achieve within, uh, within here. So if I navigate to the, uh, screens and then go to demo, and I'll quickly zoom out. These are just a couple of navigation menus that I have built. So the top one, as you can see, is the one that I've just demoed to you. So it's a very simple one that just a gallery overlaid over HTML control. The next one is the same gallery, but for the background property of a HTML control, we are just using lineal gradient. So I'm not sure if you can actually see if I was to just quickly zoom in. You can see the color goes from lighter blue to darker blue, uh, and that's all we're doing. Again, it looks very modern, uh, and all I've done is literally just copied a code snippet from a website to get that nice lineal gradient in there. Now, the next menu you might recognize from some of the kind of shopping websites. Uh, most of the time when you go to, to a, a kind of mobile application where you can do, do a little bit of, of shopping, whether that's uh, clothes shopping, furniture shopping, you always have some kind of basket button at the front. And that's because as a user, this is the key thing. So, so the company building the application obviously wants you to, to, to have that button at the front so you, you make sure you go to checkout. But from an end user perspective, you know that this is the key button. So if you want to check out, you know that you just click one button. You don't have to click on 20 buttons and you go straight there. Again, we have some buttons at the front. So as you can see, this is giving us quite nice user experience. I know exactly what, what I'm doing. Now, the next one is a little bit more colorful. Again, I, I saw an application that had a similar menu and thought it would be a perfect kind of use case for, for Power Apps. So for this menu, as you can see, we have the same principle. So we, we obviously have colorful items in here. The principle is exactly the same. If I was to just navigate into here, and I think it was a menu number, um, there we go. The principle is exactly the same. So we still have the menu items in here. So we have that main, uh, gallery on top and then we have the HTML text. Now, if I was to open the menu, the only difference that we have in here is that I have another div tag within here and that div tag will dictate the text in here and then will dictate the color. That's all that's changed. Apart from that, we are just using the low code properties that we can change within the application without having to use any code to customize that as well. Now, the next kind of menu is very similar to this one. The only difference is that you can actually pop out to the top uh, rather than pop out to kind of sideways. So as you can see, if I was to just navigate, we have different colors and you can see that that's kind of popping up to the top. Now, the next one, as you can see, it's a little bit extra. I just want to show you kind of what you can do with, with lineal gradient and then a bit of box shadow as well. Uh, very over the top. I can't see a use case for, for using that, but it looks cool. So I thought I'd, I'd include that in here. And then the last one is my favorite. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see on the screen, but we have a little bit of animation in there. Um, hopefully you can you can see that. So again, the principle is exactly the same and I'll show you in a second how that's built. All we're doing is we're using, again, the HTML control and we're using the gallery items on um, in here. But the only slight difference is that if I navigate to our image, which is where the SVG code is contained, rather than use timer controls and do all of that to kind of create some kind of animation, which will then obviously uh, kind of affect the loading time of your application because you're adding additional controls. If I was to open that, you will see that I just have a very simple code snippet to say that I'm animating the transform property, uh, the uh, transform tra attribute in SVG. And if I select this item, I want this to start moving. And then if it isn't, I just want it to stay static. And that's all we're doing. Just a very simple code snippet that I've added in here. And that animation will be there persistently. So if I was to click on one of these, you'll see that we have that uh, navigating around there. So again, that's that's pretty much for my for my demo.
if you wanted to learn how to do this step by step, I have recently launched a blog as well, uh, which uh, has a series on how to actually build this from scratch. So whether you are a developer or not a developer, I am doing a lot of tips on how to actually build it from scratch. And equally, if you don't want to learn how to build it because you don't have time or you're not keen on, on using code, these will shortly be available on my GitHub as well. So I'll make it available for, for um, everyone to use. Any questions at all? Anyone would like to, to find out anything, anything more? This is a uh, wait for it. Amazing, <laughs> Christine. <you. laughs> uh, fantastic. Love the animations. Love the look on UI and user experience. Uh, you know, we, we always joke that your app could give you the fountain of youth and give you everlasting life. But if it doesn't look good, <laughs> doesn't feel good, nobody will use it, right? And so you've shown how powerful that is today. Really fantastic. We'll get all the blog information and the sample information into uh, the, the, the blog post for this call as well. And we will ensure that everybody has access. And maybe we can work with Christine to get a version of this up into the sample gallery as well yeah. because it's Perfect. so powerful. So that would be really fantastic. And, uh, and she'll get a badge for that. Awesome. Really Christine, thank you, you so much. This is really <laughs> epic stuff. Thank you.